Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Zach Drew. And I'm Andrew Ballers. We've got a few different topics today, uh, a central theme, but later on in the program, we're going to be running a video. We talked about a couple weeks ago how uh, we were going to be going with our friend Jody Haskins to, and she did, she eloquently confronted the uh, the public library here in Decatur, Illinois. Um, and, you know, we're not Chicago, but, you know, we have Decatur, Illinois, and, a, and a, a several small towns all connected with, with Decatur being the central hub. And our county has a uh, hundred and something thousand people. So we're not, you know, we're not in the boonies, but we're not Chicago either. And, and, and they were confronted about this particular book and it's called, It's Perfectly Normal, um, which everything in this book, uh, the vast majority of it is totally not normal. Mm -hmm. It's made, it's in the children's section of the Decatur Public Library, and it's been found in schools in the surrounding areas as well. So there was a board meeting that took place and we went there, we filmed it, we filmed Jody's, um, basically asking them to remove this book, why it was ever approved. And you know, if no one is standing up for the kids, who's going to? Yeah. If you're not going to the board meetings of your of, of your school district of your of the board meetings of your of your libraries, the indoctrination is running rampant. So we're going to be playing that clip um, at the end, uh, uh, towards the end of the show. Listen, I talked about last week, and I need to say it. I'm going to start saying it more often because I need people to be aware. If you're watching us on YouTube, that's not going to last. Okay. Please uh, uh, subscribe to us on Rumble. That's a much safer place for us to be. We are on Facebook. Uh, I think after YouTube, we'll be then eliminated from Facebook, but Facebook is in the future. YouTube is very, very close. You get three strikes on YouTube. We have two of them. One more strike and we are permanently gone. You'll never see us again on YouTube. Everyone watching, just remember that the, the best place to watch is every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, if you have Direct TV. It's in their religious channels on WHT World Harvest Television. We're also on the PTL Television Network in 9 million homes in select markets throughout America. Check us out on television. That's one of the best ways to watch. Also, if you like to watch our social media, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our Rumble page. Uh, we won't get banned there. There are six companies that control every single thing that that you see, that you read. People's entire worldviews are made up from what these six companies tell you to think. And it is Comcast, Disney, AT&T, Sony, Fox, and Paramount Global Control. And I said last week, Fox, and there are people that watch the show that don't think that Fox is, uh, Fox is on our side. No, they're not. Uh, they they just hired uh, transgender Caitlyn Jenner um, to be a, 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 a to hire her on at Fox News. Actually, the CEO Susan Scott said Caitlyn's story is an inspiration to us all. She's a trailblazer in the LGBTQ community, and her illust uh, illustrious career spans a variety of fields that will be a tremendous asset for our audience. Listen, they are not a Christian conservative news network, and if you aren't getting your news from an alternative site. A, a, an alternative news source, you're not getting the big picture. Mm -hmm. That's why we, at the Zach Drew Show, we filter all of our news. We are an alternative news site, but we filter it through a biblical perspective. So once again, if you haven't gotten involved here at the show, please do so. I said last week, the April uh, donations were absolutely down. Please get involved. Go to ZachDrewShow.com um, and click the bright orange donate button, or you can uh, donated at Zach Drew Show, P.O. Box 797, Decatur, Illinois 62525. Let's get into it. Lots of things to cover. Um, I'll go ahead and say it now once again. If you have kids and they're listening, uh, put on some headphones or send them out of the room or watch this program later because uh, this, this is a follow-up program to what we discussed a couple of weeks ago, okay? This is a quote uh, written by Charles Dickens in 1859. Um, and it's a perfect quote for parents that are raising kids today. And it is a word for the day. And it reminds me of a of something that Rabbi Jonathan Kahn used to say, that we've entered in a time period of human history known as the abolition of gray. You'll not be afforded the luxury to be in the middle anymore. The line is uh, being drawn 
more and more clearly month after month in the sand. And you're either on one side or the other. It's the abolition of gray. This is his quote. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. Today's program is going to be about schools, the public school system, what they are indoctrinating your kids with. The schools are discipling your children. Let's just read a couple of scriptures up top. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says this, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even whenever he is old, he will not depart from it. Deuteronomy 6, 5, and 9 says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words that I give you today. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them whenever you're at home or away. When you lie down or get up, write them down and tie them around your wrist and wear them as headbands, as a reminder. Write them on the door frames of your houses <clears throat> and on your gates. Then we have Deuteronomy 11.19. Deuteronomy 11.19 says, Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you are on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. And then Matthew 18, 5 through 6. And this is a warning for those who cause kids to sin. Yes. It says, And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. And he's saying it would be better for that to happen than for the judgment that's going to come upon you by my father. Um, and I do want to say something here really quick, just about indoctrination. Um, I, I mentioned to this to you earlier. There's a lady on TikTok. She's a Christian. She's answering criticisms of people saying, you indoctrinate your children. So she answered with a video with her son, who's an adult now. And she said, did I indoctrinate you? He said, yes, absolutely, you indoctrinated me. You indoctrinated me with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. To indoctrinate is to instill doctrine. Yes, and the reason that this, <laughs> the reason that the word indoctrinate has become such a dirty word for people is because it, it implies that one doctrine or one ideology or one philosophy is greater than others. And we live in a postmodern world that says, that all cultures, all philosophies, all ideologies are the same. But scripture doesn't tell you, well, teach your kid how to seek out truth and hope that he finds it. That's right. Scripture tells you, teach your kid the word of God. Indoctrinate your children in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That is our responsibility as Christians. Amen. That's good. And listen right now, Vadi Bakum said this, Christians will not win the culture war until they remove their children from government schools. The ultimate form of indoctrination is this public school system indicator. The, the, the sex ed that they teach the kids, the, the critical race theory, the postmodernism philosophy, they're indoctrinating your kids 180 days a year more than that. Yeah. And, and, and the majority of the time that you actually spend with your kids other than the three summer months, it's spent, they're spent sleeping. They wake up in the morning, get ready for school, and then they go off to school, then they come back, they eat dinner, they have a couple hours at home, and then they go to bed. The vast majority of, of, of our kids' lives from kindergarten through senior year and really through college is spent with other people teaching your kids. And the Word of God says that we must be the ones instructing our children in the right doctrines, the doctrines of, of Christ. Yeah. And whenever they get old, they won't depart from it. Here's, listen to the indoctrination today. Ideologically grooming kids in schools. Here's some news you might have missed. On April 7, 2022, Florida preschool teacher, 28-year-old Louise Schwartz, boasted about teaching her students that she is neither a boy nor a girl and that she's a polyamorous pagan witch. This polyamorous gender fluid witch is a preschool teacher in Florida. She's so proud of herself that she discusses her gender and sexuality with four-year-olds. 
Ellie Dean, formerly Molly, a kindergarten teacher at the private Hillbrook School in California, uses a pronoun game to inculcate five-year-olds with her arguable self-serving gender theories. On Instagram, she goes by OKNB with, a, with NB standing for non-binary. She expects others to refer to her by third person plural pronouns, they and them. Dean is a woman who gave birth and breastfed two children before she decided that her authentic identity was male. Then she started doping testosterone, hired a, a quack surgeon to lope off her breasts and changed her name from Molly to Ellie. Dean's favorite curricular components are not surprisingly social and emotional learning and anti-bias education for kindergartners. Private schools may teach whatever destructive nonsense they want, but Dean is the cold, sharp tip of a colossal iceberg that is plowing through government schools as well. Here's one. Brooke Charter School first grade teacher, Ray Schuyler, a bearded woman who pretends to be a man. Listen, I feel like this is what's... I can't believe I'm reading articles like this. Yeah. Listen, let's just... A bearded woman who pretends to be a man told kindergarten students this hog, hogwash during a Zoom class. You know what? This video was only about a minute and a half. Go ahead and play this video real quick. This is what the kids are being taught throughout America. And something something cool about me, Miss Hammond? All right. All right. So something that's really cool and unique about who I am is that I am transgender. So we touched a little bit about that at the beginning of this week uh, in the book that Miss Hammond read, but I'm going to give you my explanation about what it means to be transgender as well. So when babies are born, the doctor looks at them and they make a guess about whether the baby is a boy or a girl based on what they look like. And most of the time that guess is 100% correct. There are no issues whatsoever. Um, and, but sometimes the doctor is wrong. The doctor makes an incorrect guess. Um, when the doctor makes a correct guess, that's when a person is called cisgender. When a doctor's guess is wrong, that's when they are transgender. So I'm a man. But when I was a baby, the doctors told my parents I was a girl. And so my parents gave me a name that girls typically have and bought me clothes that girls typically wear. Um, and until I was 18 years old, everyone thought I was a girl. And this was super, super uncomfortable for me because I knew that wasn't right. Um, the way I like to describe it is like wearing a super itchy sweater. Um, the longer you wear it, the itchier it gets, and the only way to make the itching stop is to have everyone see and know the person that you really are. So when I was 18, I told my family and my friends that I'm really a boy, and it was like this huge weight had been lifted off of my shoulders, and I had the freedom to be who I truly am. And even though this experience is super challenging sometimes, um, I am su it made me the person I am, and I'm super proud to be transgender. You might think to yourself, well, Zach, these are the exceptions. These are isolated events. Listen, absolutely not. There was a bill passed in Illinois that all public schools must start teaching a particular type of sex education. And it is horrific where it talks about these things, welcoming these things, that these things are perfectly normal. These are not isolated things. It's just that the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that you just have no idea they're going on. Most parents have no idea that, that the schools are actually teaching these things. Let's continue with this, with this article. That short video that you just saw teaches parents everything they need to know about morally and intellectually unmoored activists who self-identify as teachers working in schools. First, they propagandize in many ways, including through literature, direct instruction, and demagoguery. Second, they propagate highly controversial beliefs without telling young students that the explanations are controversial, disputed, devoid of scientific support. Doctors don't guess. Listen, doctors don't guess whether babies are boys or girls. Like the video said, they identify the sex of babies. Skyler was correctly identified as the girl she is and, and evermore will be. Her mother's obstetrician did not guess, and he or she was not wrong. At 18, Skyler decided to start masquerading as a man. Skyler did not merely explain... She manipulated the emotions of young, innocent children. Of young, innocent children. And remember, Matthew 18, 5 and 6, if anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming to me, but if, if any of you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. That's right. It's unbelievable. And yet she says these things. 
She manipulated the emotions of young and innocent children who would, who would not want anyone, especially a teacher they know and like, to feel super, super uncomfortable. So in addition to feeding them fantastical fiction in the guise of objective truth, Skylar is trying to make children feel predisposed to sex, sex masquerades. Unbelievable. Here's the last part of this article I want to read uh, from the author uh, that's important. I first warned about the emerging, emerging trans evolution in late 2008 when I wrote about bisexual Anglican priest Laurel Dykstra, who has twins via a sperm donor. Dykstra wrote an article in 2005 on how to make preschools trans-friendly. Here were her explanations and recommendations that are, that are coming to fruition today. She said that the gender binary system is harmful to everyone. She moralized that it is not enough for classrooms, teachers, and schools to be open or non-judgmental. They need to be actively trans-positive. Uh, Dykstra recommended that when talking to preschoolers, teachers should say things like, well, most men have penises, but some don't, and some girls grow up to be men. She urged teachers to encourage kids to question their assumptions. How do you know that that person is a woman? Could a man wear a dress? She instructed teachers to call children by the name and the pronouns they chose. She recommended accessorizing classrooms with a tranny teddy. Have a non-gendered toy doll puppet. Do not use pronouns and give, them creature, give this creature a variety of gendered clothing, such as a skirt and tie. If asked, say, oh, Binker isn't a boy or a girl. She suggested having a Butch Femi day. Why not teach kids language like Butch Femi as an alternative to boy, girl, or male, female? You could have dress-up days to play deliberately with gender like fabulous and fearless day or capable and campy. You know, we're going to stop there. These are the type of things that they're trying to teach our kids. They're trying to indoctrinate our kids. And we wonder why the world looks like the way it does today. And so many people are just, they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything about it. Yeah. And it really is our responsibility because like I mentioned on a couple of shows ago, there was a Barna study that's, that's that it, it interviewed people who said that they're Christians because over 50% of the country says, I'm a Christian. Well, what does that mean? Only 8% actually had a biblical worldview. That means we are in the minority. There are not a lot of people like us who believe the way that we do, who stand on biblical foundational principles. So we need to be the ones out there speaking up. That's right. And listen, you had an article talking about... Uh... Uh, uh, about the, uh, the library. Talk about that article then, and then go to what we did at the library recently. Yeah, here's the headline. Amid public concern about grooming kids, American Library Association picks president who pushes, quote, queering libraries, a large organization that drives the training of U.S. librarians and their use of public funds, has chosen a self-described, quote, Marxist lesbian as its next president and growing concern about libraries actively connecting children to sexually explicit ac activities and materials. Emily Drabinsky was elected president of the American Library Association last week by the organization's members. She'll take office in 2023. ALA, just to put this in perspective, has approximately 54,000 members and the vast majority of its membership fees are provided by taxpayer funds. Wow. So we are funding this. Yep. Here's a, here's a quote from one of the, the fellow ALA members that voted for her. I so value Emily's work in intentionally bringing a class, labor, and queer consciousness to her efforts as an anti-racist ally. This is the kind of indoctrination that we're talking about. Drabinsky's YouTube videos are replete with teaching other librarians how to, quote, subvert and inject hard left politics and sexuality into their publicly funded work. For one example, consider one of the many such lectures she gave to other librarians on July 6, 2021, titled, this is what she titled it, quote, teaching the radical catalog. In the lecture, Drabinsky discussed her homosexual coming out experience and how saturating in a campus environment of proliferating sexual identities changed how she approaches being a librarian at her first librarian job. 
This is her first job as a librarian. Quote, this is her quoting, at Sarah Lawrence, absolutely everyone was queer. There were so many ways to be gay, and it was my job to teach those students how to find themselves wow. in our library catalog, she said. She described querying the library as, quote, critical thinking and, quote, thinking critically about the catalog. Yeah, and I always, I don't know about you, but I always grew up liking the library. And it's a fun and innocent place to just let your imagination go wild. But because they get money from the government, the government is using our taxpayer monies to make these hubs of indoctrination. Yeah. Wherever government money goes, it, it becomes hubs of indoctrination. And that's changed. Like whenever I was growing up, you didn't have to worry about being a kid and accidentally checking out pornographic material in the children's sections like you can at the Decatur Public Library. There's three copies of this book. Um, uh, so I'm a part of these meetings every month. They're called Restore Our Constitution. We meet at, at a little holiday, uh, it's like a, it's a hotel conference center. Mm -hmm. And I open it up with prayer and a lady by the name of Pam Johnson, we often have uh, state representatives and, and federal Congress people come and speak and I guess who's running for um, Illinois, Governor Darren Bailey spoke a few months ago. And so I opened up these uh, events with, with prayer and Pam Johnson had a copy of this and I, and I requested this mm -hmm. uh, from her for a couple of weeks. I wanted to, to go through it and I was horrified. I mean, the, the images in these things, um, you know, if, if I sat down, if I went to a park with a bunch of kids and I said, hey kids, I wanna, I wanna read you this book, guess what? Give me about a half an hour and I'll be in the back of a cop car and I'll be charged with some type of, I don't even, I don't even know what they're called, but like letting kids look at pornographic material type of thing or being in possession of it. Yeah, and that's not a joke. That's, it's not. That would really happen. And this is in the, like I said, it's in schools, it's in, and it's like whenever I read this, that article, the headline, amid public concern about grooming kids, American Library Association picks president who pushes querying librarians who's known, uh, who, whose title is a, is a Marxist le lesbian? Yes, right. that's what she calls herself. This is who's heading up one of the largest library associations in all of America, right? I mean, this, this is what they're, they're, they're indoctrinating our kids with. Yeah. And so, like I said, Pam, let me go through this book and, and I was horrified and so we ended up partnering up with, with a friend of ours that actually uh, attends as well the, the Restore Our Constitution meetings. Her name's Jody Haskins. Mm -hmm. And um, you went there and set up the cameras. I was there with you in the board meeting. Yeah. You set up the cameras and we, we filmed her speaking to the board of directors. That's right. And, and what we did cost no money. All it did was cost time. These are, these are public meetings and it's something that anyone can do. I mean, you can look up when, when these people are meeting. It's your money that's paying these people. You know, you have a right and a responsibility to be a voice in these kinds of meetings. That's right. Yeah, so go ahead and pl and just so you know, there's a few words that are blurred out, or not blurred out, um, edited out. Yeah. Um, some of those words that were in the book, it, it talks about, listen, if kids are in the room, get them out. This book teaches fourth graders about anal sex. Um, there's a chapter in there called It's Perfectly Normal. And it has pictures of kids, cartoon. You can see their faces, their bodies, cartoon images of kids masturbating. And it's called as perfectly normal. Listen, that might make you even uncomfortable that I'm talking about this. If we don't talk about it, if the Christians don't call into light and expose what's being done in darkness, then who is? Is the world going to take their own and bring them into the light and expose them? No. It is the job of the Christian to show what they're doing, and this is what they're doing. So go ahead and um, and play that video of, of Jody Haskins at the, at the library. Good afternoon, Decatur Public um, Board members. Thank you very much for your time. I'd rather spend um, this beautiful afternoon elsewhere, but I'm compelled 
uh, to speak out regarding a book found in the children's section of this library. Actually, there are three copies of this book um, found here entitled, It's Perfectly Normal. This is not a normal book. It is a pornographic book that is aimed at our youth. This book exposes children to shocking, explicit sexual material. This work contains not only graphic, verbal descriptions of intimate sexual acts, but it also contains detailed illustrations of these very acts, otherwise known as porn. I'm gonna say some words that I would rather not say, but they're in this book. This book also includes highly controversial topics, including abortion, same sex, graphically showing children how to saying it's all perfectly normal to an audience of children. It never informs the readers that these topics are controversial and, it, and it's up for debate in the adult world. Nowhere in this book is the virtue of chastity and fidelity to a spouse celebrated as perfectly normal. There are numerous studies on the use of sexually graphic material by students which produces negative psychological effects, including having more casual sex partners and having sex at earlier ages. This book is not objective in how it presents its material, rather it uses emotions and feelings to get its point across. This is not a typical health and wellness book. Decatur Public Library board members, I have a few questions for you. First, were you aware that this book is in the children's section of this library? I'm talking children's, I'm not talking adult, children's. Were you aware of its content? There is nude pictures on, throughout that book. There are people having sex in that book. Who approved this book for the Decatur Public Library? I would like to know that. Who approved this book to find its home on the shelves in the children's section? Who funded this book? Who approved the funding of this book? Why is it even in the library? I and other community members are asking for its removal from this library. I am also asking for a warning be added to this book when checked out from other libraries coming into the Decatur Public Library through the Library Loan Program. Parents and patrons need to be made aware of its sexually graphic content, just like movies, music, and video games have warnings. This book is far from normal, and it's right here for our children to browse and check out with zero safeguards. Any child with a library card can check this book out. That's wrong. It doesn't belong in our library. Thank you. Listen, we're out of time for today's show. I want to encourage you, like, like Andrew did, get involved. Find out what you can do. Find out what meetings you can be a part of to truly instill change in your area on a local grassroots level. If you have any questions on how to do that, um, you're living in different states, so I don't know all the different state uh, laws for that, but we can look into it for you if you want to get involved in that way. Everybody needs to be doing something. Mm -hmm. It's about the kids, people. It's about the kids. And listen, I'm, I'm going to end with this, and I'm not going to go into it, but even Agenda 2030, that the 17 goals, the 17 sustainable goals, there is a goal in there that truly, I believe, is talking about ending homeschool. So even on a, on a global level, the Marxists that rule the world understand that to in, truly indoctrinate the world's uh, children, that they're going to have to outlaw homeschool. Yeah. And they're going to have to... Uh, start uh, intimidating private schools too. Uh, they can't say certain things, do their certain things and label it as hate speech. It's coming people. But while you still can, homeschool your kids, get them out of public schools. Listen, we are totally out of time for the, today's episode. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.